Hey everyone, in this video, I'll be talking about the ovarian cycle. So let's get started. The cycle starts when FSH is secreted by the pituitary, which helps the follicle mature into the graphene follicle. This is what the graphene follicle looks like. This is the ovum, oocyte, or the unfertilized egg. The cells surrounding it are known as the corona radiata cells and the oocyte is suspended in this cavity called the antrum by the cumulus euphorius. All of these cells are called the granulosa cells. Outside the granulosa cells are the theca interna cells and these fibroblast like cells are called the theca externa cells. This is a story on three fronts in the graphene follicle the theca cells, the granulosa cells, and the oocyte. Oocyte is destined to become an embryo. Will oocyte become an embryo? Let's find out. The theca cells and the granulosa cells, just like all loyal friends out there, were determined to help oocyte fulfill her destiny. So this is what's happening in the graphene follicle. LH is like make androgens. And the theca cells are like, all right. Androgen is a substrate for estrogen biosynthesis. And FSH stimulates the granulosa cells to convert androgens coming from the theca cells to estradiol. So this is a summary of what's going on. Theca cells make androgens and pass it to the granulosa cells. And granulosa cells have an enzyme, aromatase, which aids the conversion of androgen to estradiol. Estradiol maintains the oocyte. All these estradiol will suppress the production of LH from the pituitary. All of this is going on in the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle. Estrogen is like oocyte's parents. It had inhibited LH because the oocyte was immature. Now that oocyte has matured and it's time for her to go, estrogen stimulates the production of a large amount of LH and the LH surge is necessary for ovulation. So estradiol is like we need some LH surge down here and the pituitary is like on it and this secrete a lot of LH and LH is like, it's time to ovulate. LH is necessary for ovulation and the surge increases progesterone and PGF2 alpha production, which induces the contraction of the smooth muscle cells of the theca externa. Remember I told you in the beginning that theca externa are fibroblast like cells? Well, the contraction increases the intrafollicular pressure, which aids the rupture of the mature oocyte. It's departure time, my friends. Oocyte is leaving and going to the fallopian tube, where she may or may not meet the sperm and become the embryo. Meanwhile, in the ovary, with no oocyte around, theca granulosa cells are wondering what to do. Granulosa cells are like, let's get converted to luteal cells and help oocyte implant. And the theca cells are like, yeah, it's time for progestation. Progestation is getting ready for gestation. And who is the progestation hormone? Progesterone. Corpus luteum produces high levels of progesterone which is responsible for the development of the endometrium for implantation. Let's pause for a minute and take a look at what's happening here. LH is required for the maintenance of corpus luteum. However, corpus luteum itself is producing progesterone which is suppressing the LH production in the pituitary. If there is no LH, corpus luteum will atrophy and become corpus albicans. Now back to the comic. The luteal cells are waiting for the ovum to send a message. If they do not hear from her, they will assume that oocyte has not become embryo and they will call it off and give the successor follicles a chance to mature. 
But what if Usaid has implanted? She will produce HCG and HCG will tell the luteal cells to stick around a little longer for her. HCG is very similar to LH and it preserves the corpus luteum. And corpus luteum produces progesterone until the placenta begins to take over progesterone production around 10 weeks of gestation. That's all. Hope you had fun learning.